Hello, welcome to the Roundtable. We keep you up to date on key global issues with expert analysis. Now I'm going to introduce today's guest. We are joined by Dr. Chi Hyun-jin again. Welcome back. Glad to see you again. Today we have a new guest, Dr. Chu hyo yeon Welcome to the Roundtable. Thank you for inviting me. In the digital age, e-commerce has become an integral part of our daily lives. In particular, Chinese e-commerce companies such as AliExpress and Temu are growing fast. Uh, that's amazing. The Chinese e-commerce platforms are not only competitive in terms of pricing, but also you know, making things very easier for the shoppers mm. to search and buy, right? Yes. Uh, Professor Chu, these Chinese e-commerce platforms are indeed growing really, really fast. Could you tell our viewers more specific explanations accounting for their growth? Yes, um, the Chinese platforms such as Temu and mm. Ali are increasing our domestic market share with the unconventional low price mm. policies. Mm -hmm. As of last month in this year, according to the market research company Wise App Retail Goods, mm. AliExpress um, has 7.17 million users, ranking third among domestic shopping application after Coupang and 11th Street. Mm -hmm. um, the Temu entered the top five uh, with 5.70 million users in a short period mm -hmm. of uh, six months mm -hmm. after our uh, domestic launch mm -hmm. in July of last mm -hmm. year. When we combine Ali and Temu's the monthly user together, the total monthly users are exceeding 10 million, uh, million. Yeah, so easily beating 11th Street and taking the second place. But still, there is nowhere nearby Coupang. Uh, but the problem is that the penetration, um, the rate mm. into domestic market is frighteningly fast. Mm. So for example, the Ali's monthly user uh, started with 2.27 million mm. in January last year. But now it more than tripled to 7.2 to 17 million in January, rising straight um, to third place mm. in just one year. No. What about Temu? The Temu's monthly active user was only about 0.33 mm. when it mm. first entered into the Korean mm. market, mm. but it jumped to 5.70 million, jumping 17.3 times in only six months, and jumping to fifth place, the outside the ranking. Right. Uh, moreover, the number of new installation of Temu's application in January ranked the first. I mean, Professor Che, according to Professor Che's explanation, if this is not an explosive growth, I don't know what is. I mean, within less than one year, these Chinese companies ranked number two and number three in terms of a, a number of users in Korea. What accounts for the success of these companies? I think that the number one reason is the massive Chinese uh, domestic market. Mm -hmm. So this you know, domestic market of China is a strong foundation for e-commerce platform. As Chinese companies grow within their market, mm -hmm. they can naturally learn their uh, technical and also logistical mm -hmm. expertise mm -hmm. uh, needed for global expansion. Mm -hmm. And their second reason, that there are many nicknames of China but one of them is the factory of the world. Right, right. right? That means they can easily produce a wide variety of products from their domestic factories mm -hmm. at lower cost. Mm -hmm. So this can lower the price of their products. Mm -hmm. And also they are actually improving the quality of their products mm -hmm. and customer services. Mm -hmm. So until recently, some mm -hmm. Korean people and company believe that the Chinese retailers cannot compete with the Korean companies because they thought that Chinese companies have a low quality and fake products mm -hmm. problem. Right. But however, the things are changing nowadays. Mm -hmm. For example, Chinese retailers like AliExpress are trying to overcome the issue of uh, trust. Mm -hmm. you know, therefore, the AliExpress recently announced that they will invest a total of 10 billion won over the next three years mm -hmm. uh, to implement so-called Project Clean. Project Clean. Mm -hmm. okay. This is designed to uh, protect Korean companies' intellectual property rights 
and also Korean customers. Uh -huh. Uh, also, they announced that they will guarantee a refund mm -hmm. if any purchase is suspected to be a fake. Wow. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that's why Chinese companies have become major players in the Korean uh, e-commerce market. Mm -hmm. I see. Mm -hmm. uh, Professor Chu, uh, some experts argue that uh, this is just the beginning mm -hmm. of the dominance of the Chinese e-commerce platforms in the Korean market. That's right. Right. Uh, we used to think that oh, Chinese companies cannot beat Ch Korean rivals because one, there is a trust issue of right. the quality of products, and the second point is that they cannot be Korean rivals in terms of uh, immediate delivery, right. overnight delivery. But yes. now they are here with us. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, as you said, uh, the Chinese platforms are increasing domestic customers' awareness and desire to uh, the purchase mm -hmm. through a very aggressive marketing strategy. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, Ali is expanding its business by creating uh, a dedicated domestic customer center mm -hmm. and collaborating with the CJ Korea Express mm -hmm. to offer a service that mm -hmm. provides immediate compensation mm -hmm. of one to three dollars mm -hmm. when and the product does not arrive within mm -hmm. five mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. Moreover, um, the Ali is pursuing um, a plan to build a domestic logistic center mm -hmm. within the year. Mm -hmm. um, so right now, if you order a product from Ali uh, in Korea, you have to actually go through a long, long process, um, such as um, the collection in China and the warehouse mm -hmm. in um, China logistic mm -hmm. center and the shipment, uh, the customs clear in China mm -hmm and shipment by ship and plane, mm -hmm. and finally arrival in Korea, but still customs uh, clearance right, in Korea, right. mm -hmm. and warehouse in Korea, logistic center, and finally delivery to Korea. But uh, if Ali sets up a domestic center in Korea, it can store goods there mm -hmm. and um, the deliver then mm -hmm. as soon as a consumer mm -hmm. orders. Mm -hmm. And Ali so has already started um, the focusing on building a cross-border e-commerce mm -hmm. logistic network since last year. In particular, in June last year, um, the they built the Korea Logistic Center in Sandong mm -hmm. province, which is very closer mm -hmm. to Pyeongtaek port. Mm -hmm. So goods are stored there and then immediately shipped to Korea Mm -hmm. when order comes in from Korea. Mm -hmm. Ali is also attracting domestic sellers with zero commission policy. Mm -hmm. In October um, the last year, I, uh, the Ali opened K-Venue, uh, a private section for um, the Korean products, and has been attracting a, a large number of leading Korean mm -hmm. brands such as LG Household mm -hmm. and the Healthcare mm -hmm. and Yuhan Kimberly mm -hmm. by waiving fees uh, for Korean companies that open stores by some certain deadline. Mm -hmm. They are um, the using actor Ma dong mm -hmm. who is popular, his role in the movie Crime City, um, as they're advertising um, the actor, and announced on further investment worth 100 billion won, as uh, Professor Chen mm -hmm. mentions, in domestic market to increase their dominance. Mm -hmm. I see. I mean, this is fascinating. I'm learning so much. So these Chinese e-commerce platforms already have virtual warehouses inside South Korea, right? Yeah. And they already clear the customs check, right? That's and right. they are not only selling Chinese products, but domestic products of South Korean companies exactly. to South Korean customers, yes. right? So oh, I, this is amazing. I want to visit that uh, K venue. Oh, mm. K venue, The K yeah. venue section in the AliExpress, right? That's mm. right. I want to go there after <laughs> this. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, Professor Chu, uh, these Chinese e-commerce platforms are coming to South Korean market, uh, which does not need to be only negative ne yeah. phenomena. There must be some positive effect, right? Of course. One of the major characteristics of market economy is free competition. Right, right. Um, so the competition among sellers to attract many customers um, result mm -hmm. in um, the supply of better products and service at mm -hmm. relatively lower prices, mm -hmm. right? And in addition, the innovation mm -hmm. is promoted, mm -hmm. so uh, the better product and the, the quality would be improved improved mm -hmm. as well. So if you actually apply this very basic mm -hmm. economic principle to uh, the e-platform industry, 
yes, there is a significant mm. advantage of uh, the consumer in the mm. sense that mm. the consumer can purchase a variety of product mm. at a relatively lower mm. product mm. online. Mm. In addition, the consumer can better find the real pros and cons of uh, the domestic sellers through fierce competition mm. process. Mm. And also another significant advantage is that the, it also has expanding sales channels mm. for sellers and also the positive effect of reducing the burden of commission fee, mm -hmm. right? And also interestingly, the neighbor and cacao saw this, uh, the Chinese e-commerce on slot as uh, an opportunity. Mm -hmm. For example, so if Chinese e-commerce companies expand their marketing and investment, it could have a positive impact on cacao and neighbors' online advertising mm -hmm. sale. I see. Yeah. It benefits the Korean companies. Yes. Right? Okay, good. So, Professor Che, it seems like the penetration of Chinese e-commerce companies into South Korean market is a reality now. Mm -hmm. Then, South Korean companies need to cope with a new reality with mm -hmm. their own strategies. The South Korean companies must differentiate themselves mm -hmm. from Chinese competitors so by focusing on high quality products mm -hmm. and also high quality services and also a better understanding of local shopping mm -hmm. needs. Mm -hmm. And also there's a unique advantages of South Korean mm -hmm. companies. So they can build a uh, more uh, trust and loyalty mm -hmm. among Korean customers mm -hmm. as a based on uh, transparent mm -hmm. supply chain. Mm -hmm. And uh, because Korean people are still somehow have, have a concern mm -hmm. about the, the quality of a Chinese products. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, therefore, this high quality, better customer service, mm -hmm. and greater transparency and trust mm -hmm. are where we need to go. I see. It. Uh, Professor Chu, any words of wisdom for South Korean companies and the government? Uh -huh. Commerce, including e-commerce, is usually divided into value consumption and price consumption. Mm -hmm. Just literally speaking, uh, the value consumption focuses more on the higher level of satisfaction with a higher mm -hmm. price, while the price consumption is a behavior of consuming by focusing only on low price. Mm -hmm. I personally think nowadays um, the strategy from domestic companies are likely to put more weight on increasing uh, the proportion of value consumption mm -hmm. rather than um, mm -hmm. the price consumption. Mm -hmm. But I want them both, the quality and price. As yes. Well. <laughs> <laughs> it remains to be seen whether their strategies will pay off and Korean e-commerce companies can maintain their competitive advantage and profitability. Let's move on to the next topic. Please take a look at the video first. The Korean-type supersonic fighter jet KF-21 is the outcome of the nation's cutting-edge avionics technologies. But last month, allegations of attempted technology theft surfaced. An Indonesian engineer participating in a joint project to develop the aircraft and working at the Korea Aerospace Industries headquarters was caught during a security check. The engineer attempted to take out related information stored in eight storage devices and was apprehended while giving the drives to an accomplice at the entrance. 방산업체는 군사 기밀을 취급하고 있고 무기를 만드는 방산 기술을 개발하고 있기 때문에 보안 제도를 잘 구축하고 있습니다. 그럼에도 불구하고 보안은 어, 완벽할 수가 없고 늘 어, 구멍이 존재합니다. 기술 자료가 유출되는 경로는 대표적으로 두 가지가 있는데. 첫 번째는 내부 직원이라든가 외국인 직원들이 몰래 기술 자료를 빼가는 경우이고 두 번째는 사이버 해킹입니다. 회사 직원이 기술 자료를 빼갈 때 최근에는 첨단 장비를 사용하기도 하는데 초소형 몰래 카메라나 녹음 장치를 회사에 몰래 가지고 가서 기술 자료를 촬영하거나 녹음을 합니다. 그리고 그 자료를 집으로 가져가기도 합니다. In 2023 Korea's defense exports amounted to roughly 14 billion US dollars. The number of countries importing Korea's military technologies has increased from 4 to 12. Currently, it has 12 weapons systems, up from 6. It is expected the nation's defense exports will surge from last year to top 200 billion dollars this year. As Korean defense products are growing popular overseas, the risks of technology leaks are also on the rise. 
Recently, North Korea and China are consistently attempting to hack into the website of South Korea's Agency for Defense Development. An employee at a Korean large company was found guilty after being found to have stolen confidential military information regarding a project to build a Korea destroyer next generation. According to the National Intelligence Service, the number of industrial technology leaks surged 64% over the past five years. During the same period, leaks of core state technologies amounted to 33 cases in total. 국민 세금을 들여서 오랜 기간 개발한 기술이 해외로 유출된다면 국가적으로 큰 손해입니다. 특히 무기를 개발하기 위해서 만든 기술이 유출되기 때문에 군사적 역량이 유출되는 것과 같습니다. What are the ways to prevent leaks of defense technologies? In January, Indonesian engineers dispatched to the Korea Aerospace Industries were found to have attempted to steal technologies related to the development of the supersonic fighter jet KF-21. Professors, if this is a true, proven to be true, then this is a way, way serious crime, is it? Uh, yes, if the technology leak is, is confirmed, mm -hmm. it is indeed a serious matter mm -hmm. because it includes a sensitive military technology. Mm -hmm. Such incidents can have significant implications for national security and also the protection of advanced military technology. Mm -hmm. And therefore, ensuring the safety of this technology uh, is crucial for any country's security mm -hmm. and strategic interests. Not only the national security of South Korea, but you never know, right? right. What kind of country will be targeted and attacked by this technology stolen, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, right. Okay. As you see, um, the K-Defense industries mm -hmm. are exporting um, the K-Defense products to various countries mm -hmm. nowadays. But however, as technology leak issue mm -hmm. related to the defense industry continue to emerge, mm -hmm. and then the reputation of K-Defense mm -hmm. industry would be shaken. Mm -hmm. Given that the corruption in the defense industry, including technology leak, uh, is not just a corruption problem, mm -hmm. but a serious crime that threatens national security Mm -hmm. and moreover the, the national uh, the economy. Right, right. So it is very necessary to find mm -hmm. a clear cause and uh, the solution. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the tech leak is not just limited to the air fighters of South Korea. Recently, another case of a tech theft was reported. This time, the entire blueprint of Korea's homegrown submarine was leaked to Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Professor Che, why tech leaks are happening so repeated, repeatedly? Uh, there is one, one reason for this problem. Mm. In the past, the South Korean companies mm. uh, mainly sold a finished product, mm. but nowadays mm. they are strengthening so-called strategic defense cooperation mm. with the importing countries. Mm -hmm. So this kind of cooperation includes technology transfer, local production, mm and also joint development. Mm -hmm. So we know that we, we sold K2 tanks to right. Poland. Right. Right? And also there was a contract uh, with Egypt uh, for K9 artillery. Mm -hmm. right? And they are example of this kind of cooperation, mm -hmm. including uh, local production. Mm -hmm. So this is the uh, strength of a South Korean defense industry. Mm -hmm. But however, there is also negative side mm -hmm. behind this kind of cooperation. Mm -hmm. Be because it increased the risk of other mm -hmm. countries stealing our mm -hmm. advanced technology. Mm -hmm. So we need to be very careful mm -hmm. uh, during this cooperation process. Mm -hmm. It sounds like this is an unfortunate dark side of the success of the uh, military uh, export of South Korea. Right, yes it is. It's a dark side. And that's why we see this kind of some bad news uh -huh. quite often nowadays. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, Professor Chu, uh, how significant and impressive the global standing of uh, South Korea's uh, military equipment export in the global market? Yeah, um, the interest nowadays, interest in na uh, the national security is increasing due to Russia and Ukraine war, right. mm -hmm. and the perceptions of military equipment are changing, also changing uh, due to uh, Israel and Hamas war. Mm -hmm. Korea, as we know, a divided country, so we are also receiving a lot of attention and emerging 
emerging as a comparative force in line with the international mm -hmm. trend. So that's why we call the K defense industry like mm -hmm. K-pop, right? right? <laughs> uh, to be more specific, according to the report titled the Swedish Security Think Tank, so called the CIPRI, mm -hmm. the Korea was ninth and largest exporter of weapon in the world uh, over the past five years. The United States ranked uh, the first in world arm market with 40%. What about Korea? The Korea had 2.4% uh, share of the global defense export market, which is an increase from the market share of 1.3% over the previous five years. But moreover, the gap in the market share between Korea and the fourth to eighth place is not mm -hmm. too large. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is one thing for South Korea to uh, enlarge the volume of arms export in the global market. It is another for the South Korean government and companies mm -hmm. to deal with the tech leaks, right? Right. South Korean government is nowadays uh, stepping up its efforts mm -hmm. to protect our advanced technology. Mm -hmm. So they are doing some better security measures to stop unauthorized mm -hmm. access. Mm -hmm. And also, this effort includes advanced security measures against hacking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the government is also making new laws and working with importing countries to protect its technology So during strategic defense cooperation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are some examples. So National Intelligence Service of Korea recently formed the Defense Infringement Response Council mm -hmm with the private uh, defense industry mm -hmm. to better respond mm -hmm. to the theft mm -hmm. of uh, defense technology. Mm -hmm. And also, the Korean defense companies uh, have a defense security day mm -hmm. on some months. Mm -hmm. So on this day, they check the security of their people, mm -hmm. buildings, mm -hmm. and, and all equipment. Mm -hmm. Efforts are made by South Korean companies and the government. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, some domestic defense companies are reluctant to report tech theft cases to authorities out of concern that their reputation could be damaged and they could face difficulties in winning orders overseas. Professor Chu, how can these uh, Catch-22 situations to be better dealt? Um, yeah, the, although scale of the defense industry is growing, mm -hmm. but companies that have been victim of uh, the overseas uh, technology mm -hmm. leaks um, are reluctant to report to them. This is because there are concerns that there will be a disadvantage in mm -hmm. uh, receiving orders um, the, due to being branded as a memory, the vulnerable to security. Right. Mm -hmm. So we need some uh, the system management, the system improvement, such as providing in incentives for victim companies to voluntarily report to, to the police. Mm -hmm. And moreover, rather than relying solely on individual sense of duty and ethics, the defense company must have throughout a security management system in place to fundamentally prevent the leak of the confidential data. In order to fundamentally solve this problem, there is a need to reorganize our defense industry of the system by referring to the cases of overseas defense industry corruption eradication on the system. So for example, the Germany is building an anti-corruption system in the defense sector in terms of legislative supervision, acquisition regulations, and organization. And the, another country, the Finland, it operates a variety of systems to prevent corruption uh, in the defense sector, including uh, the ensuring constitutional-based uh, access to information information and also a strict version of uh, the ombudsman system. Mm -hmm. So above all, in order to eradicate um, the, uh, the corruption in the industry, uh, a proactive prevention system uh, must be established um, mm -hmm. rather than ex post sanctions. Mm -hmm. So for example, the leniency mm -hmm. system, which is designed to encourage whistle blowing um, the, through the exemption systems uh, for voluntary reporter and one strike out uh, the programs mm -hmm. to uh, the permanently expel the corrupt actor from the, mm -hmm. uh, the defense market referenced. Mm -hmm. So more preemptive and uh, far restructured uh, measures That's uh, right. need to be taken. Defense technology is a valuable asset of a nation. When it's stolen, both the government and the businesses should work together to minimize damage. Professors, thank you so much for sharing your insight with us today. Thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is all we have for you today. 
We'll be back with the analysis of the latest current affairs. Thanks for watching and see you all next week.